Are you ready to get from point A to point B in your professional and even your personal life? With his proven 99-day performance accelerator process, this man's no-nonsense approach gets you focused on your real priorities and take the essential actions necessary to your success. International speaker and author of the book, Change Your Life 20 Seconds at a Time, he has coached salespeople and entrepreneurs around the world to achieve tremendous breakthroughs by overcoming obstacles and costly limiting beliefs. Please welcome the man passionate and relentless about you achieving your success, the master of accountability, Mr. Denny Mayu. Hey guys, welcome to another episode of Focus 180 Podcast. And today we're lucky because we have the chance to learn and spend some time with Sherry Woody of Sherry's Keys. On the journey to success, you need the right shoes. It's time to step out, step up, and step into your greatness. Today, Sherry will discuss how to make it to the top in a high hill and explain what are the necessary keys to achieve success in your professional and personal life. Sherry, welcome to the podcast, and how are you today? Oh, I am doing fantastic. Thanks for having me. How are you? No, oh, I'm very, very good, and I'm excited about this podcast because we're going to be talking about success. I'm going to help some people to get where they want to go. So we kind of do the same thing, so I'm excited about it. You ready? Absolutely. It's going to be easy. So I'd like to start with the, the same question and ask everybody. Do you have uh, something to share that most people don't know about you? Not business related, maybe personal? Mm, that most people don't know. Uh, probably because this was really just born out of the, the pandemic is that I've learned to cook. cook. And I am, yes. I did. I was not a cook before. I was the takeout, microwave, whatever queen, go to friend's house and bring home, take, you know, <laughs> leftovers, whatever. But I have learned to cook uh, some of my grandmother's actually old recipes because I have her, her uh, recipe book from when she passed along. And um, so, yes, I'm really excited. And that's something that a lot of people don't know, because, like yeah. I said, it was pretty much born out of the out of the pandemic where I had the time because yeah. I, you know, worked from home and, yeah. you know, we were all on lockdown pretty much. And we had to eat. Right. Yeah. Yeah. No, maybe I should learn how to cook, too. <laughs> <laughs> something I need to and work it's, on. It's really it can be really soothing. I find myself because you, you watch all the the cooking shows and all that you see people and they have all these ingredients now i'm still not down with all of the like 20 list ingredient recipes that still intimidates me a little bit but i like i have the little clear bowls and i set everything out and i do my food prep and then i put it all together and so i enjoy it it can be relaxing in a way and then the smell in the house is awesome and then the food it tastes really good if i must say so myself very cool very cool Hey, let's talk about your business right now. I mean, uh, if you don't mind to tell us about your company and I'm also, how do you get started? Ah, sure, sure. My, my company is Cherie's Keys and um, it was born out of basically it's strategies for success. I spent a lot of time um, working with uh, young women and young men in some cases, but just talking to them about how they how to build their lives and how to um, develop a strategy so that you're just not flying in the wind. You kind of have a step, you have a guide, you have an, a certain interest maybe of what you want to do, be, and have in your life. And so it was born um, out of that. And then the, the other part of it is um, my, my mother. I, I must give her much, much of the credit. And sadly, she passed along this year. So I miss her dearly. Um, but my mother uh, was a minister. And she always encouraged me to speak during her, her ministry sessions. And I would lead meditations and things of that nature. So just over time, I think, 
uh, I developed the knack for public speaking after years of <laughs> just being afraid to speak in front of anyone. Yeah. And um, she really is, I would say, the pillar, the reason for the push for, because, you know, we always need that someone in our lives that believes in us to the point that they push us to, to do what they see is great in our lives. We don't always see it, right? In the beginning, we don't see that level of greatness that we can rise to in the beginning. So that's that's where, that's how Cherie's Keys was born. Okay. And then over time, I began to encounter people, young women, young men, women my age, and we would talk and have these discussions. And somehow, I would be able to help. And a part of that is life experience, right? Because of just how we live. The other mm -hmm. is how we grow and learn. So through study over the course of time, and then just dealing with people on an everyday, a daily basis. So Cherie's Keys was born out of that. And, and then just to help folks to know that anytime is the right time to begin. Because often we find ourselves, oh, well, I'm getting older now, so maybe I shouldn't start a business. Or, oh, you know what, I have the children now, or the husband, or, oh, I just, I'm ready to retire. Even in retirement, retirement is not the end all be all. Retirement can be the launching pad for something exactly. new and exciting, right? Yes. So I, I'm always looking at ways that I can encourage people and empower people because that's what it's all about. When you feel empowered, oh, it's it's incredible what you're able to do. Yes, ma'am. Good. I mean, uh, I was going to ask you this question. Do you mind to share with the listeners one of your greater accomplishments this year? Before you go on, I know the answer, but I want to share you can share with people. <laughs> So the question for the listeners, do you mind to share with the listeners one of your greatest accomplishments? Absolutely. And I am still just flying high over it because I won an Emmy this year for Outstanding Newscast. My, my profession, I, I, am, uh, I work in television news in Las Vegas. I'm the content director here for Channel 3 in Las Vegas. And over the years, I've worked in several television markets. And um, earlier this year, I won my first Emmy. So I have just been over the moon about it. So excited. I keep it displayed. You can probably see it over the shoulder. I see it on the right hand side. <laughs> I keep it in my studio. And I think it's studio. heavy too. I didn't I'm think sorry? that thing was heavy when you showed it to me. It is very heavy. heavy. Yeah. Um, yeah. And uh, it, um, it is a sign of accomplishment. Great. And I take it with me sometimes to different speaking engagements to to show to people, because like yourself, a lot of people have never seen it in person before. Yeah. And then just to say, if I can do this, so can you. Because as I mentioned, I was I had stage fright early on. I, I started out in a television, um, a television talk show for teenagers. And I would be so afraid to speak in front of the camera that I became, I always say I started out as a prop because I would just sit there at the table. We did it in a round table format. So I would just sit there at the table and just kind of nod my head back and forth while the other teenagers talked because I was, once the light came on the camera, I was too afraid to say anything. I see, so I, I look at that as, well, look at me now and just thank God so much that, you know, through the guidance of my parents, through the guidance of uh, all the mentors that I've had in my life, um, I have reached this level of success. I am now an Emmy winner. I am now uh, living out the, the other part of my dream, which is to be a public speaker. So I am just, you know, I'm, I'm excited. 2022, while being a, I'm sorry, 2021, while being a very challenging year for in so many ways, because I did lose my, my dear mother, but it has also been just a very, very fulfilling and um, uh, exciting uh, year for me. Very cool. Hey, congrats on that. That's impressive. Thank you. Yeah. All right. So let's talk about what you do right now. Right, make it to the top. Uh, what's the name of the um, your your making think, it make, to the top in high heels? In a high heel. Yeah. So yeah. you got a 
you get a few different keys, right? Without mm -hmm. going too deep on it because of time restriction, do you yeah. mind just to go, uh, I mean, what, what are the keys anyway? Sure. Um, making it to the top in high heels, I use various types of shoes to talk about um, Cherie's keys. Now, overall, Cherie's keys are, and you can see them in my set here, passion, peace, power, impact. And then I use shoes to tell the story of how we can make it to the top in our high heels. Now, one of my shoes, I always start with the shoe with the broken heel. And this was literally one of my favorite pairs of shoes. And I, I was going into an event and I broke the heel. And so I had to hobble in and, but I always have a pair and a spare. That's what I always tell people. You have a pair and a spare. I had another pair in the trunk of the car. So you have a backup plan. Yeah. When you're dealing with life, issues come at you, especially us as women, we have to have a backup plan. And then another very important shoe that I use is my, my baby shoe. And these are my very first, <laughs> Cherie's very first pair <laughs> yeah. And uh, of course, you know, your, my grandmother kept these and that's, that's how I ended up with them. But that just means in different areas, we need to take small steps. Sometimes we want to have everything perfect to start out. But I always encourage and empower women to just take that one small step because it builds and little things really matter. So why and why do they matter? Because they build momentum. When you can take that small step, see how you become successful at that level, then you start looking at, oh, well, I can take the next step. And then the step after that, and then I use a gym shoe that it's all about getting in the game, making sure you know the rules of engagement when it comes to dealing with your company, your uh, clients, different relationships that you're in. And then I have a really very, um, a very shiny, shiny shoe filled with rhinestones <laughs> that are, yeah, I uh, said, no, yeah. yeah, because why? It's unique. And oftentimes, especially this style of shoe and rhinestone, it's unique. And oftentimes we become the one and only in a certain situation. Your business may be the, on, the one and only that uh, offers a certain service or product. You may be the one and only. And for example, in newsrooms, sometimes I found myself as not only the one and only woman, but the one and only woman of color when it came to sitting at the management table. So we are there for a reason when you're one and only. And you need to be visible. You need to be vocal. You need to be relevant as you build your reputation and you're able to get people to see who you are. And then you, you start to do what? Once you've, once you've developed in those areas, you start to wear the nicer shoe. You, you might have a really nice pump in a bright color like red. This is one of, one of my favorite pair that I like to show off uh, during my presentation. And when you have um, you know, the, nice, the nice shoe like this, this has become, you've gone through that level of self-discovery where you, uh, you started to look at, well, what relationships are important to me? And how do I build those, excuse me, relationships? And then how do I make myself, how do I become of value? in certain relationships. And I use the, um, the analogy of a nickel and a dime, right? Because we know the nickel is twice the size of a dime, but the, the, the dime is twice as valuable. So you should look at relationships. I encourage people, look at relationships in that vein. What relationships are dime-sized in your life but bring so much value? What relationships are you in? that you're able to bring value to as well? And then which ones do you need to get rid of? And we need to make that assessment, you know, throughout the course of the year. Uh, what, where, what relationships are helping me and growing and bringing value? And then which ones are not? And then you nickel and dime, you remove the ones that aren't doing uh, very well. And then you start to make impact. And impact, I mean, you've got the super high stiletto uh. shoe. And this is, I call it the gold standard. This is when you start to make impact. You start to 
look at how you are influencing people around you and how your influence is causing what your legacy to develop and grow. Because we all want to leave a legacy, right? We all want to be remembered for something greater than ourselves of how we've helped someone else or helped to build our community and our world. So those are Cherie's uh, making it to the top hot in high heels in, in a nutshell, as quickly as I could tell it. <laughs> no, that's very good. And I will say to any listeners or anybody who wants to learn more, I mean, this is go listen to her. I mean, watch her in uh, face to face. The presentation is uh, your presentation is very good, well structured, and the message is really powerful. Thank and I know you. I told you again and again, but that's 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 important so thank you for doing this i mean that's uh, that's really good i mean i like i like when i look at this i love the word passion power mm -hmm. i say that to my people all the time mm -hmm. i am a powerful i'm a powerful yes. whatever right very cool yes i am passionate i am powerful i am at peace Those yeah. Are all things. yeah so let's do this i'm gonna ask you some questions and i ask everybody i'm curious about your answer so let's do this yeah. In your opinion, name three characteristics or human traits necessary to be successful in your industry or any industry, or let's say for women in general, right? Since we're talking, I'm looking for three sure. words. Absolutely. Well, Denny, I've created an acronym and I call it HER. H-E-R. Her. Yes, HER. And the words are humility, empathy, and realness. HER. And I encourage everyone, take her with you every day, male or female, because when you are at that level of having humility in your life, when you humility starts with how you how you think about yourself and others. Right. So how do you think about who you are and then the people who are around you? And it's not um, it's not a power play that we're looking at. We're just looking at how do we when I am in that point of being humble, that I, I'm, I'm not an egomaniac. I'm not bragging on myself. Yes, we should celebrate our successes. Of course. But we look at it from a point of view of how do I help someone else along the way in my level of, of success? And then we look at empathy because that's how you see someone else. And that's the ability to share and understand. It goes to a deeper level of understanding the feelings of someone else, right? Because a lot of times we, we look at people, but we don't see them. And so when we have empathy, we really begin to see, oh, this is the perspective from that person's perspective, what this means or how this should be handled, especially in business. A lot of us, we have systems set in place of how we do our business on a daily basis, right? And then someone else may come in and they have a question, a concern, they, you know, they need something. And the first thing you want to do is fall back on what your system. Yeah. But a lot of times it takes having that empathy of seeing just from the way they ask the question, what, what does, what are they really asking and what does, what, what does it mean to them? Because what our, our basic human needs are what? To be seen, to be heard, and to be celebrated, right? And when we have humility, empathy, we're, we're at the crust of that. We're looking, we're, we're getting an understanding uh, and truly seeing another person for who they are. And sometimes it's simply in what they are asking us. And then the final part of her is realness, genuineness. How can you bring that genuineness into your everyday life where you're being real, not only with other people, but as women, sometimes we're not real with ourselves. We, there are times when we know we need to say no, but we're so used to pleasing that we say yes instead. Mm -hmm. So when, but when we're real with ourselves, then we know we can say no, without fear of retribution. We know we can say no, because what does it do? It gives us that power and it empowers us to be able to do those things that we know we need to say yes to. 
like building our businesses or, you know, uh, uh, improving our relationships with a loved one or a friend. So her, her, take her with you every day. Humility, empathy, and realness. Yeah, I love it. Love it, love it. Very powerful message too. I mean, I'm going to bring her too. <laughs> yes, you bring her I too. will. Everybody, I mean, you're talking to women right now, but as a man, I'm listening to that. I'm listening to and I said, hmm, makes sense, makes sense. Need to do that. So thank you for the great message. So I got a question right now, and it's a little bit different right now because some people have a hard time to answer that because we go deep a little bit, but I believe nobody is perfect, right? And uh, we all make mistakes. So if you don't mind to share something you did in the past that didn't work so well, you lost money, time, and energy. So for I'm thinking about the people, the younger people, or the people who want to transit from a job to another business mm -hmm. or something, what would you say? Sure. Um, I think one of the biggest mistakes that I have made over and over but each time I find a way to sort of self-correct or, or, yeah. or course correct, as they say, is not being true to myself. Oh, really? Because, yes, because I have that, that desire sometimes to want to, okay, I need to make sure that everything is right for everybody else. I see. Before I determine, well, what, what is really going to be good for Cherie in this instance? And it's not being selfish to the point of, I don't care about anyone else, but selfish to the point of, I look at how my person can be impacted by what I say or do. And when we move through life that way, where we're able to look at how, okay, what, what do I say? I always say when there's a crisis or a situation or you know, something it just blows up at work or whatever, the most important thing is the next thing you do, right? Nice. Because you can either make a decision that's going to catapult you forward, or you can make a decision or react in a way that's going to make the situation worse. So it's always taking the time out to pause, take a breath, the, t the little time out that you might need to make a good decision for yourself and all those involved. Cool. No, it's cool. And uh, I'm, I'm just thinking here what you just said, but I was, uh, let's talk about a little bit. Uh, see, see somebody, you know, some people are stuck right now, right? Yes. COVID, no COVID, the situation financially or whatever. So in your opinion, what's the best advice to the people who are stuck what do, what do you want to tell them to sort of become unstuck? If you can do so that when, 20. So when you're stuck, the best thing that you can do is be honest with yourself about why you are stuck. A lot of times we are not, right? We will look at, well, we'll, 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 we'll try to put all of these other extenuating circumstances instead of looking at, well, Cherie, why haven't you decided to take the step that's going to make you healthier? For example, let's yeah. use that because that's always a goal for people is yeah. especially once the new year rolls around, I'm going to lose weight. You know, I'm going to drop those 20, those 20 pounds or what is it? The, the quarantine 15, I think is what a lot of people call it. <laughs> you know, I, I want to do that. So uh, uh, we often will not be real with ourselves about why we should do it because it all starts with the made up mind. Mindset is the number one. Yes. Once you make up your mind about, I need to lose weight because right now I'm unhealthy. Right now I can't make it up a flight of stairs. Right now, none of my clothes fit. Right now, my doctor is saying, hey, if you don't do something about this, but we will, well, you know, but right now I really love, I love grandma's mac and cheese. You know? <laughs> New Year's Eve, I got to have cocktails. And it's not, I, I, I was talking to my doctor once and they said, well, you know, um, one day doesn't make the situation any different. And I'm like, and I thought about that. I was like, you know, you're right. Yeah. It's like, so splurging on having that great meal or those cocktails on one day. Okay, cool. But again, like I just said earlier, it's what you do next. So what happens the next day? 
And the next day, if you continue on that vein, we never reach our goals. And then I think a lot of us have that, um, that um, uh, uh, problem with perfection. We want to make sure that every, all the stars have to be aligned. Everything has to be in place, one, two, three. And we continue to do all of this research over and over and over instead of just doing it. Exactly. You know, I wanted to be a speaker and speak on stages. I can sit there and talk about it forever. Oh, you know, one day I'm going to do this. and da, da. But once I start putting myself out there and actually talking to people, yeah. then what happens? The momentum builds. You take yes. that small step. As I said, the baby shoe, you start taking the small step. You let momentum build. And momentum can build, Denny, as you know, both ways, right? Oh, yeah. Good momentum. Or the bad, where you continue to stay in that same spot where you never progress and you remain stuck because you just keep saying, oh, well, I need to do this. No, take the step. Feel the fear. And another, it's a cliche that we hear all the time. Feel the fear and do it anyway. Yes, ma'am. But you just do it in smaller doses to get yourself moving. Don't decide, okay, January 1, I am going to, Run five miles and you haven't walked a mile. <laughs> That's true. A lot of people do that. So you start with the small, start just going around the block, your neighborhood a couple of times, then start, you know, doing it twice. Then, yeah. okay, well, now I'm going to expand that and maybe go a little longer. And before you know it, you're at the mile, then the two miles and five miles, you're finally there. But we overwhelm ourselves by thinking we have to do it all at once instead of starting with that one small step. Good. I hope people got that and hopefully they take notes because maybe they should really, re-listen really to what you just said. Because very powerful. And as you know, I agree 100%. Same thing. Hey, what's the best, what's the one thing you do every single day? Let me say that again. What's the thing you do every single day to become a better entrepreneur or be, become a better you every day? The one thing I do every day to become a better me is meditating. Um, I, and I started years ago, as I mentioned earlier, I used to, uh, and, I, and I still do teach meditation classes from time to time, but along in my mother's ministry, I did teach a, me a meditation class and I've studied meditation over the years. And I will tell you that the power of being, that's why one of my keys is peace the power of being at peace with yourself, peace is a superpower. Mm -hmm. Because when we get to that point, that inwardness of understanding who we are, where we're coming from, then we're able to move with ease. We're able to set goals that are not only real, but attainable. You know, a lot of times we set these you know, pie in the sky goals and they're pie in the sky for us right now because we haven't taken the other steps to get us to that level. I want to make a million dollars. Okay, well, when was the last time you made a hundred thousand, mm -hmm. or or have you yet? Or mm -hmm. when was the last time you made a thousand dollars in a week or two weeks or whatever the time span? So we have to look at things realistically. And the power of meditation for me, it, it, it empowers me. It, it brings me joy, that inner joy, where I'm able to then look at my business and know that, okay, you have a lot of work to do. But again, what do I say? I break it down into smaller steps so that I'm spreading it out. So another is time management, is managing my time so that I'm just not... Oh, I have a hundred things to do. Okay, I'm going to do them all today. And then what happens? I get nothing done. Yeah. So I break them down into attainable daily steps. And sometimes you have to do it by the hour, Diddy. You know this. You have to, okay, this is a huge project. I'm not going to get it all done in one day. But if I take, you know, an hour today, an hour, two days from now, and then I go back and revisit it, and then I can push myself forward. So meditating for me helps me set the pace and set the tone for my day. Yeah. It helps me to look at, you know, my 
my attitude and how I approach other people, how I respond so that I'm not just always reacting to everything. Because when you're unsettled, you just kind of react and you find, Mm -hmm. you feel yourself going from here to there. But when you're settled, you respond in a way that's not only beneficial for you, but to whoever you're interacting with. Very good. Hey, very quickly now, because time is getting shorter and shorter, best book recommendation. Best book recommendation. I love it. It's by Guy Finney and it's called, I want to make sure I get it right. The Secret of Letting Go. And I typically read this book probably a couple of times a year. There are great anecdotes in it as far as just how to different things you should let go, steps you need to take, why you need to let certain things go out of your life and then invite other things in. So that is one of my, I I learn something new every time I read the book. So I would highly recommend that. Very nice. Thank you. What's your favorite quote if you have one? Favorite quote? There are so many. Um, many? I'm going to, Huh? Yeah. Is it so many? That's a quote. Woo. <laughs> I'm going to share this one though, because I, I think it, because again, it has to do with mindset. And I think mindset is so important. Muhammad Ali said, I didn't know I was the greatest until I said so. Nice. And a lot of people, my, my father was really big into boxing and when Muhammad Ali was one of his favorites and, um, when I look at that and then I look at the course of his life, Muhammad Ali's life and how, you know, he just, the different things that he went through. And once he began to tell himself, not only am I the greatest, I'm the greatest of all times with an S he would say. And when we, and that was a mindset. And when the, the thriller in Manila, they had the, uh, there was a, a, a documentary on recently about the thriller in Manila and how he just his mindset in going through and, and, and up into that fight. And I thought in the, in the course of our lives, there are so many things that if we take that higher level looking at them and how we fit into how am I in the picture, which is what he did. He always looked at how am I going to win? What is my strategy for winning? Yes, this this person on the surface and the commentators may be saying that, that they're better than me, but in his mind, he was the greatest. And so everything he did leading up to that fight now that we can go back and look at it, right? Now that we can go back in retrospect and look at it, we can see that, oh my goodness, he, he like foretold his future. And so for us, we can also have that ability of foretelling when we start to look at our lives and look at the things that we want to experience. That's what I, I, I always, um, um, I encourage people, think of what you, what you would like to experience experience, how you want to experience things. Because a lot of times we set goals, but we don't have the, the, what the experience is going to be related to those goals. And, and, and often when we get there, we're just like, you oh, know, was this all? Is this, you know, it? But when there's an experience attached to it, because we remember experiences, right? We remember that first client. We remember that first, you know, uh, for me, the, the Emmy, I am going to remember that moment of when I found out because it was just, you know, middle of the day and I kind of wasn't paying attention. And I get an email. If you would like to come and pick up your Emmy by such and such a time, I'm like, what? <laughs> That's so cool. <laughs> you remember moments. I will always remember that, that moment when it happened. Cool. And, and so I just encourage people to have what you tell yourself, what you say to yourself is so important. And so that's why his quote is, is that's why that's one of my favorite quotes. No, like, I know I'm that was a long story, but that's why. No, I no, but that's, that's really good because I tell my client all the time, watch your language. I'm not talking about the F word, you know me, but mm-hmm. watch your language, meaning watch the way you talk to yourself and exactly. to the universe. That's really powerful. Hey. Uh, in a few 30 seconds or less, how do we okay. contact you and buy, uh, if you people want to do business with you, how do we do that? And okay. you have a program, so, new, I think you have a new, um, 
a new program coming out, right? And yes, I do have a new women's empowerment session that's starting January 16th. It's on Sunday. And my sessions are held on Sunday. Why? So that you can get your mind right for Monday. Yeah. So we can get our week off to a great start. You can find me on LinkedIn at Cherise Keys. You can find me on Instagram at Cherise Keys. And you can find me on Facebook at Cherise Keys. Okay. So <laughs> no, that's it, cool. Yeah, it's going to be very easy to find me. Um, I will be posting more information about the sessions. I also do private um, coaching for those who who are interested. And then I have some speaking engagements that are coming up in the first quarter of the year that I'm very excited about. So I'll be sharing those as well as the dates get closer. Very cool. Yeah, make sure I know and I'll promote it too. Absolutely. All right. So here's what we're going to do. I am going to uh, just say goodbye to my people and we'll come back for the end. Is that cool? Okay. Give me like 30 seconds or something. Okay, cool. Hey, first of all, I want to thank you. Thank you, Sherry, for everything. I said Sherry. I want to say Sherry. I think I'm getting thank better you. and better. I want to awesome. thank you for doing this. Great message, great, powerful things. Hopefully, you never know. So, you know, that's what I like doing this because we might change somebody who's going to listen to this, somebody's life. Because you know what? She's right. I want to do this. I want to be the same. So thank you for that. Uh, also, I mean, if uh, the people who's listening to that, if you're successful in your business, if you want to speak, just uh, send a, an email to ZLE. I'll put the email below and uh, you can uh, contact her. She's going to tell you what we need, what you need to do in the format and everything. We're always looking for people. And the more people, the bigger we become. Here's what I want you to do. If you like what she said, and I know you did, what is it? Subscribe, put a comment, put a like. I don't care what you do. Just spread the word so we can help more people. That's what I want to say. And uh, I want to say, Sherry, I want to give you almost the last word. Anything else you would like to add to your Just message? Thank or? you. Thank you for this opportunity. And I look forward to, as you said, helping people make it, helping women make it to the top in high heels. 2022 is going to be a phenomenal year. We are going to make impact in 2022. That is the title of my, uh, my new session. And I just think we can, we can do it together. My story might not be your story. Your story might not be mine, but together we can have impact influence and empower one another very good guys thank you for listening by the way i see you in a couple of weeks and i finish always the same way stay focused on what on what you really 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 want see ya